Okay, here I want to do some examples about simplifying exponents, whether you have integer exponents or rational exponents, rational meaning fractions. But before we get to that, we have to look at some of the big major rules that we have. And those rules being these six basic rules here. Okay, so these include product rule, quotient rule, power rule, raising a product to a power, raising a quotient to a power, and the negative rule. So first let's look at the product rule. The product rule says if your bases are the same, then you can add the powers. When we talk about bases, we're talking about the big numbers here. So as long as those are exactly the same, then you can add your powers together. So here, the base that we're working at is that we are going to add your powers. Now the quotient rule, again, is the same thing. As long as your base is the same, then you can subtract your powers. So here, we are going to subtract But we have to do it in a special way. You need to make sure that you always do top minus the bottom. Okay. So we're looking at top minus bottom uh, to do our quotient rule. Now for our power rule, what we are doing is we are taking something and we are raising it to a power. When we do that, it means that we are going to multiply your powers together. Okay, You have the one single base, and so we're going to multiply the powers together. When we raise a product to a power, so we've got two terms inside and we don't know what they are and we're raising that to a power it means your power has to be just applied to both terms okay so it gets applied to the first and it gets applied to the second and then you have to make sure you reduce 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 raising a quotient to the power is the same thing you have a quotient going on inside and you're raising that to a power so the power gets applied to the top and the bottom when we talk about negative powers, well, in exponents, we don't like negative powers. And so to make it positive, what we have to do is we have to flip it and then change the sign of the power. So whether you have a single term with a negative power or you have a quotient with negative powers, the rule is the same. You have to flip it and then change the sign of the power. Okay, so we want them to be positive. So notice in this first example, my uh, power is negative, so I flipped the reciprocal, i.e. I moved it to the bottom, and the power is now positive. On the second part here, notice both top and bottom were negative, so I flipped um, both of them around. So my B moved up here to the top, thus now it has positive power, and the M moved to the bottom and it now has a positive power. Okay. So let's look at a couple examples of each of these um, rules. So the first thing we have is the product rule. So again, the product rule says as long as your bases are the same, then you would multiply them together. So if we have x to the fifth times x to the twelfth, notice both of my bases are an x. Therefore, my bases are the same. So this is the same as saying x to the five plus twelve. So you would do the math, and this becomes x to the 17. The last thing you would always want to look at is can I do any more math with this and in this case you can't. 
Okay, so this would be as far as that one can go. Now here we have quotient rule. So let's take a look at the quotient rule. Quotient rule says if I have a fraction, so for example, x to the sixth divided by x squared. Notice my two bases here are the same. Therefore, we can rewrite the problem to say x, and remember it is subtraction, top minus bottom. So 6 minus 2. And then here, we would do that, and this becomes x to the fourth. Okay. So now, we have the power rule. So the power rule says I'm taking something, so say x to the fifth, and I'm going to raise it to the third. So the power rule says multiply. So let's actually break this down, and what does this mean? Well, if we look at this as a single unit, when I'm raising it to the power, I'm telling you I have three of them. So this becomes x to the fifth times x to the fifth times x to the fifth. Okay, so that's actually what is going on. In order to shortcut ourselves, we say I can take this and simply multiply my powers. So notice breaking it apart is the same as I have said x to the five times three. Both of these are going to end up giving you an end result of x to the fifteen. Okay. So that is the power rule. Raising a product to a power says that I have more than one term inside my parentheses. So here I may have something like 4 to the first x to the seventh. And I'm going to raise this to the third power. So here, we have to apply the power onto both, which means we have to use multiplication. So this becomes 4 to the 1 times 3, and then x to the 7 times 3. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, so this is 4 to the 3rd. And then 7 times 3 is 21. So this is x to the 21st. But then, this part right here, we have to do the math. And the reason for that is because we can. 4 to the 3rd actually has a value. And its value here is 64. So this is 64 x to the 21st, and this would be your most simplified answer. Okay. So now we have raising a quotient to a power, which again is the same thing. It says we're going to take a big quotient. So for example, let's do 5x to the 4th over 3y squared. And again, let's go ahead and raise this to the third power. So what this says is that I have to apply this 3 onto all four terms. So this is going to become 5 to the third, x to the 4 times 3 over 3 to the third, y to the 2 times 3. So when we simplify all of that, 5 to the third is 125, and this becomes x to the 12th, and this whole thing is over, 3 to the third is 27, y to the 6th. Now we would want to look at this fraction to make sure that we have nothing else to reduce. And notice 125 over 27 doesn't change. And here my two bases are different. Therefore this would be the most reduced fraction. 
Now last, we have our negative power. So for example, if I had x to the negative 5, well, what we have to remember is we have to remember that all numbers are over 1. So what we need to do here is we need to flip it. So we're going to flip it and then we are going to change the sign to a positive. So here this is going to become 1 over x to the fifth. Okay. So those are the six rules that we need to pay attention to when simplifying our results. So how are these going to apply? Well, you may see questions like this one that say simplify using positive exponents only. So notice I have 5m squared n to the negative 3 times negative 7m to the fourth n. So the first thing I need to do is I need to um, multiply your constants. You could also call them the coefficients. And in this case, I am doing multiplication. Okay, so this would then I'd have to follow the product rule, which says to add the powers. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this to make this look a little bit better. So I have to first multiply my constants or coefficients. So this is actually going to be 5 times a negative 7. Then I'm going to put my two m's next to each other. So I have m squared times m to the fourth. Lastly, I have my n's. So I have n to the negative 3 times n. So I have to multiply together. So these two here are going to become negative 35. I then have to multiply these two together. So this becomes m to the 2 plus 4. And then I have the last piece to do. So this becomes n to the negative 3 plus 1. So we need to simplify this. So we have negative 35 m to the 6th n to the negative 2. Well, what we have to remember again is that this whole thing would now be over 1. And so because of um, my negative here, this whole term we have to move down to the bottom. We need to flip this one. And the reason we have to flip it is because it's negative. So as soon as we do that, this is going to give us a negative 35 m to the sixth all over n squared. Now all of my powers are positive, therefore I am finished. And this becomes my final answer. So this right here is what we were looking for. Okay. So let's look at another one. So in this case, notice I have a quotient. So I have 56 x to the eighth y to the negative 4 over 8 x to the negative 2 y to the fifth. So when I'm looking at what I need to do here, here I have to 
divide the coefficients. This is the same thing as simplifying them. I then have to follow the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says I need to subtract the powers. When I subtract the powers, you need to remember that we need to do top minus the bottom. Okay, so the last thing that you would need to do is you would need to fix any negatives. So let's actually take a look at this. So I have 5 or 56 over 8. So I'm going to write these all out separated so that you can see them being reduced. So then I have x to the 8 over x to the negative 2. And then I have y to the negative 4 over y to the fifth. So 56 over 8 is going to reduce down to 7. And then I'm going to have x, and because I'm doing the quotient, it means I have to subtract my powers. So this is going to be 8 minus a negative 2. And then I'm going to have y. Again, I have to subtract my powers. So this is negative 4 minus 5. So this becomes 7x. Negative and negative becomes positive. 8 plus 2 is 10. And then I have y. Negative 4 minus 5 gives me a negative 9. This one right here we need to fix. So this means we need to flip it. So we are going to have 7x to the 10th divided by y to the 9th. Notice all of my powers are now positive. Therefore, I have finished and have my final result. So this is the result that we were looking for. Okay. All right, so now let's look at a big one. And notice with this one, not only do I have the quotient rule and the product rule going on in the middle side or the inside, I'm raising this up here to a power. And I'm raising this to the power of negative 3. So the first thing that you want to do here is you want to simplify inside the parentheses. So what we're going to do to simplify is we are going to follow your quotient rule. And remember that says to subtract your powers. So let's do that first so that we can see what that looks like. So ignoring this negative 3 on the outside, I'm going to simplify the inside. I have 125 over 25 and then I have a to the fourth over a to the negative 7. I then have b to the negative fifth over b to the twelfth, and then I have c over c to the negative two. 
So here, 125 over 25 is going to reduce to 5. So this is 5. And then I have a to the 4 minus a negative 7, b to the negative 5 minus 12, and c to the 1 minus a negative 2. And now I need to reduce all of those powers, so this becomes 5a to the 11, b to the negative 17, and then c to the 3. Okay. Now, I'm not going to worry about fixing my negative until the very end because I still have this outside power to do. So I need to remember that this whole thing was still inside the parentheses with a negative 3 on the outside. So I'm going to um, use now my um, power to a power rule. So we're going to use power to a power. which again says you're going to multiply your powers but you have to distribute it to all parts. So this negative 3 here has to multiply to this first part, this part, this part, and the last part. Okay. So in order to do that I have to 5 to the negative 3 a to the 11 times negative 3, b to the negative 17 times negative 3, c to the 3 times negative 3. Reduce my powers. This is 5 to the negative 3, and then I have a to the negative 33, B to the 51, and C to the negative 9. So again what we have to remember is that this whole thing is over 1, which means I have three parts that have to flip. So I've got the C which needs to flip down, I have my a which needs to flip down and I've got 5 to the negative 3 which needs to flip down. So all of these you need to uh, flip in order to make positive. So here my overall result is going to become b to the 51st over and then I have 5 to the third, A to the 33, C to the ninth. The last thing that we need to do is we have this part right here where we have to do the math. Which means we actually have to do that power so 5 to the third is 125. So the answer that we are actually looking at in its most simplified form is b to the 51st over 125 a to the 33 c to the ninth. And this is what we were looking for. This is the most reduced part of the problem. Okay. Now, in all of these, we had whole numbers as our exponents. What happens if we end up having uh, fractions as our exponents? Well, there's a couple things that we need to keep in mind. First of all, 
we could have your fraction being 1 over n, n being a number. So your fraction here represents a radical. So notice it's the same thing as saying the square root of your base where your denominator part is the index to your radical. Now in the second one here we have m over n. So notice we have a variable or a number in the numerator and a number in the denominator. This one is kind of a special case because it has two different versions. The first version says that we can set it up using um, the square root of your base and use your index and then raise that to a power. So this one here, you want to make sure that you use if no variables. Meaning all you have are numbers. The second one here says that you're going to um, take your base and raise it to the power and then apply your radical. So this one here is the one that you will use if you have variables. So the two different forms are very important to keep track of because they are so different and you need to make sure that you are applying the right one um, to the problem that you have. And then the last one is what happens if your, rat or your rational is negative. So again, it's going to be the same. You're going to flip it down so that you end up having a positive. Okay. So let's see how this works. So for, for the first one, we have 16 to the negative 3 over 4. So what you need to remember again here is that this top part represents your power and this bottom part represents the root index. Okay. So here we have no variables. So we are going to use this first form, which says that we can take the 16 as our base. So the 16 goes inside. My radical goes around it. My root was a 4. But then I have to raise this whole thing to the power of negative 3. Okay, so that is the setup. Once you set it up, you need to simplify and do the math. So you need to first work inside your radical. Okay. So I have the fourth root of this stuff. Well, I can rewrite 16 into a power of 4. And so here, 16 can become 2 to the 4th. And remember, the whole thing is still raised to the negative 3. Because my inside power and my root are now the same, this simply becomes 2 to the negative 3. We need to flip to get our positive power, so we need to um, flip it to finish solving. So this becomes 1 over 2 to the third. And then again, you need to do the math. 2 to the third is the same as 8, so this is going to be 1 over 8. And this was the result that we were looking for. Okay. So now let's look at one that's got a little bit more complication to it. Okay. So here 
we have a product rule. So the first thing that you want to do is we want to rewrite using the radical. So in order to do that, it means you need to make sure that your root is the same. Okay. So what's important here is that your root must be the same for both, i.e. the denominator. Okay, so we need to make sure that the root is the same. So here, this right here is my root. Same, this right here is my root. And notice they're both a 5, therefore my roots are the same. So I can rewrite this as a single radical. Because I have a root of 5, it means that this is the fifth root and I can input my square and this becomes m to the eleventh n to the sixth Okay, because remember this part here represents the power the top Okay, and that's going to be the same for the six right here this represents your power. Now I have to reduce each of these. Okay. So in order to do that you need to remember your radical rules. So I have 11 M's and I want to look at how many groups of five can I pull out and so one way to do that is to just simply look at the numbers and use old-fashioned division. In other words, 5 divides into 11 how many times? Well, 5 can go into 11 twice minus 10 gives me 1. So this right here tells me how many I can pull out and this right here tells me how many are left in. So I can pull uh, two of them out and I have to leave one of them in. So this becomes m squared and then I still have my n to take care of, so then I've got my radical is to the fifth, and I have an m left in, and so now I need to look at my n's. So my n, I have six of them, so again I can use the long division, which says I've got five on the outside, six inside, and I need to look at how many I can do. So 5 can go into 6 once. Subtract your 5 again. Leaves a 1. And so here, again, this tells me how many come out. And this one tells me how many are left in. So here, 1 comes out and 1 is left in. So an N comes out and an N is left in. And so that is the result that we were looking for. So I have satisfied my reduction using my rules. Okay. So let's look at another. So this one wants us to simply convert to exponential notation and then simplify if possible. So what does this actually mean? Well this means that we need to 
remove the roots. Okay, that is the goal. And we need to rewrite as powers. Okay, so let's look at this first one. So here I've got the square root of y to the fourth, um, and it's a twelfth root. So remember, this right here represents your power, whereas this one right here represented the denominator. And so here, this would be rewritten as y to the 4 over 12. And then we need to reduce. So we need to reduce and simplify the fraction. So 4 over 12 can reduce down to 1 over 3. So this becomes y to the 1 over 3, and that is the result that we are looking for. So now we have another one to do. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite these so that we can actually look at them a little better. Here I have the square root of 2, and then I have the cubed root of 2, and what you don't see is that this is a 2 and a power of 1 and this is a power of 1. So again, what do we know? Well, we know that this part is the denominator. And the same about this one. They're both the denominators. Whereas this one and this one represent the numerators, i.e. the powers. So we need to rewrite them each as their own fraction. So this is going to become 2 to the one half times two to the one third. Well now you have to use the product rule. And the product rule says that you have to add the powers. So this is going to be the same as 2 to the 1 half plus 1 third. So what you have to remember there is you have to remember your fraction rules, which the fraction rules say to add you need a common denominator. So I have one half plus one third. So my common denominator here is going to be six. So if I look at one half, in order to make six in the bottom, says I have to multiply the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom by three. If I look at one third, in order to multiply the bottom to six, means I have to multiply the top and the bottom by two. So this is going to become three over six plus two over six. When I add those together, I get 5 over 6. Therefore, 
this right here is going to become 2 to the 5 over 6th power. And again, this would be the result that we were looking for. Now the next example we have says that you need to simplify and write your solution using radical notation. So for here, the first thing we need to do is we need to first simplify and then rewrite. your fraction powers as radicals. Okay. So the first thing that we have to do to simplify is we have to use that product rule. So we have to use the product rule which again says that you need to add your powers. So here I'm going to rewrite it. I have 3 times 2 times x to the 1 half times x to the 2 thirds. Well 3 times 2 is 6. So here I'm going to have 6 and this is going to be x to the one-half plus two-thirds. So when we add that together, again remember you need to have a common denominator. So this is going to become 6x to the 7 over 6. You need to remember again that this top piece here represents your power and the bottom here represents the root. The number out in front, or the big number, is just that. It stays a big number out in front. So this becomes 6. My root is a 6, so this is the sixth root of x to the seventh. And now you need to simplify. We need to simplify the radical. Okay, so here we need to simplify the radical. So we can do our old school division again. So we've got 6 on the outside, 7 on the inside. 6 can go into 7 once. Minus 6 leaves me with once. So again, remember, this tells me what you can take out, and this one tells you what you leave in. So here, I'm going to have 6. I can take 1x out and then I have the sixth root of 1x left in. Okay. And so this would be what you were looking for. Okay. All right, so let's put all of it together. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to recognize which rule we're using. And so we are going to use the quotient rule, which says we need to subtract the powers. So I'm going to look at them. I have x to the 5 eighths over x to the negative 3 eighths. 
And then I have y to the 2 thirds over y to the 1 fourth. So I have to set that up, okay? So here, this is going to become x to the 5 eighths minus my negative 3 eighths. And then I have y to the 2 thirds minus my 1 fourth, okay? So here, this is going to become x 5 eighths plus 3 eighths becomes 8 over 8, which we know reduces to 1. And then I have to figure out my next power. Okay, So here I've got my 2 thirds. So I have 2 thirds minus 1 fourth. I need a common denominator. So I have 4 and 3. My common denominator is 12. So that means I have to multiply my first fraction, top and bottom, by 4. So this becomes 8 over 12. I'm still subtracting. And I have to multiply top and bottom over here by 3. So this becomes 3 over 12, which leaves me with 5 over 12. So here, this is y to the 5 over 12. And the last thing we need to do is we need to reduce. So the first thing we did was we had to use the quotient rule. The second thing we have to do is we have to use the fraction power rule. So I have x to the first, y to the 5 over 12. So again, what I need to remember is that this top right here represents the power, and the bottom here represents the root. So this becomes x, and then I'm doing the 12th root of y to the fifth. Now there's nothing else to do there because in order to reduce the y I would have to be able to take 12 of them out at least and I can't do that. So this would be the end result that we were looking for. Last but not least we have this one here. So this one is going to use a combination. First, we have to use the product rule, which says to add the powers. Second, we have to use the quotient rule, which says to subtract the powers. third thing we have to do is we have to use the fraction rule if we have any fractions left over. So those are the three things that we have to do. So first let's work with the product rule. So I have n to the negative two-thirds times n to the five-eighths. Okay, that's where I need to use my product rule. So this says I have to have n to the negative two-thirds plus my five-eighths. So I need to do a little bit of math there. Negative two-thirds plus my five-eighths means I need to have a common denominator. So my common denominator here is going to be 24. So this is going to become negative 16 over 24 plus 15 over 24 is going to give me negative 1 over 24. 
So my problem is going to become n to the negative 1 over 24 divided by n to the negative 1 over 4. I now need to use the quotient rule which says I have to subtract my powers. So this becomes n to the negative 1 over 24 minus negative 1 over 4. So here minus a negative becomes positive. So I'm going to have negative 1 over 24 plus 1 over 4. My LCD here is still going to be 24. So this becomes negative 1 over 24 plus 6 over 24 is going to give me 5 over 24 as a result. So this means that I have n to the 5 over 24. So the last thing we need to do is use that fractional power rule. So again, we need to note 5 represents the power and the 24 represents the root. So here we're going to get that this is the 24th root of n to the fifth. And this would be the result that we were looking for. So if you have any questions over the beginnings and the basics of exponents and fractions, please, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time.